Welcome to School Scene. I'm your host, Dan Bridges, Naperville 203 Superintendent. More than 16,500 students grow, learn, and thrive in our 22 schools across Naperville, Bolingbrook, Lyle, and Woodridge. It is our goal to ensure each student receives a first-class education and graduates well-prepared for their next phase of life, whatever that may be. In this episode, we will look at how Naperville 203 is implementing a new diversity and inclusion program. Dr. Rakita Leakes joined us this school year as our new Executive Director of Diversity and Inclusion. In this segment, we'll learn more about Rakita and her role within the district. Welcome, Rakita. Thank you, Superintendent Bridges. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Why don't you tell us in, in the community a little bit about yourself, your background, and what brought you to this position? Perfect. So personally, I'm actually from Chicago, but I spent the latter part of my teens in the in a western suburban Chicago area. Um, so I have a little bit of experience in both urban and um, suburban areas. Uh, professionally, I am an educator. I had the pleasure of working in a variety of aspects of the field of education, both in the school building as well as outside of the school building, but still within a context of serving K-12 schools. Um, I'm a former middle school classroom teacher, also served as an assistant principal of an elementary school in New York City. Um, I spent a little bit of time in D.C. working, um, doing some consulting work for the U.S. Department of Education. Um, I also um, have 11 years of experience in human resources for two large urban school districts, uh, or more specifically, New York City Department of Education, um, as well as Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. And um, what actually brought me to this work um, is honestly just the, the, the mixture of my personal and professional um, experiences. It certainly gave me a heightened awareness of the inequities that unfortunately exist um, in schools throughout the United States, regardless of school setting. So um, there are challenges that we all face in suburban, urban, and rural areas. And by me having that experience working in a variety of aspects of education, I. I had the, the luck, <laughs> the fortune to be able to, to see that firsthand. Um, and so that's what really made me interested in doing this work as an educator. You know, you're really passionate about like growing students, getting them to learn and do more. And when you see that that's not consistently happening um, in a variety of contexts, it makes you think differently about, okay, well, what should we be, we be doing differently to better serve the needs of all these different types of students? And also another thing that brought me to this work is that, you know, the United States is becoming increasingly more and more racially and ethnically diverse, which is also reflected right here in District 203. Um, our student population is represented about 63% white students, 17% Asian, 11% Hispanic or Latinx, 5% black African American, and 4% of students who identify as multiracial. Um, and so, you know, to really know and see that, like, okay, we are a diverse district, and so how are we serving all of those different student groups and student populations? And we do have some, some tough challenges and realities that we must face is that not everyone is experiencing the district in the same way. So I'm really excited to be here to serve all of those different student populations as well as our staff. Well, your excitement is just contagious. We appreciate you being here and your vast you. background has just been nothing but an asset to the school district already into this community. Thank you. When you think about your role and the work that uh, you see ahead of you. What are some early goals that you have? What are some things you hope to achieve early in this position? So, of course, I have some big lofty goals that'll take a while to get done. Um, you know, ultimately, what I hope is that as a district, we get to a point where diversity is really not thought of something separate, but it is just woven into the fabric of who we are mm -hmm. and what we do. Um, and, and that will be seen in our outcomes as far as like how students are learning and growing and how um, our community stakeholders, mm -hmm. as well as our students, are actually experiencing the district. So that's kind of the long-term um, aspiration that I have. More short-term, I really hope to work with some of our departments, such as, for example, our Human Resources Department, to ensure that we have a diverse workforce that's much more reflective of the student population that we serve, and also working with our learning services team to ensure that our curriculum is culturally responsive of the diverse backgrounds and needs of our students. Right. So you're about halfway through your first school year and your first year here in April. 
What are some things you've done so far? What's some of the work that uh, you've undertaken uh, to lead the district in this look at diversity and inclusion? Yeah, so um, within my short t tenure here so far, um, I have really hit the ground running. I um, started out uh, my work here uh, doing what I call a listening and learning tour. I think it's really important to not only look at data, data is actually very critical and you do need that, but not to look at that in isolation um, uh, in regards to making decisions about what we need to do and how we need to grow, but also to get out and hear directly from the people, learn about how they're experiencing the district, really put context to why the numbers are to the way that they are as far as learning outcomes in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so really learning, hearing directly from people, and learning from them, um, and, and that using that information to make informed decisions about, you know, what we should do next and how we can grow and move forward. What do you perceive to be some of the greatest successes in Naperville in regard to diversity and inclusion, some of the strengths perhaps that uh, you see so far in the school district? Yeah, there are a lot of things to celebrate in this school district. First and foremost, that we have a diversity advisory committee that's been in existence for a while. Um, and just having that committee in and of itself shows the, the commitment that the district has as far as getting input from the community members and other stakeholder groups um, regarding how we can do better. Um, and the, it is a very diverse group of people representing a diverse group of perspectives and experiences. So I think that's one um, area of celebration. Another is the creation of my position. I mean, again, that shows some commitment. So those two things, um, you know, combined lets us know that, you know, we are really thinking seriously about this and we, we see that there is a need for it and we really want to properly serve all students. So I think those are two great things. We also have a very committed faculty and staff and can't laud them enough. <laughs> it's indicative of the mm -hmm. fact that we are an award-winning, high-performing school district. They're out doing a lot of great work, and I've had the pleasure of working with some of them, um, you know, on the onset to just start thinking about mm -hmm. diversity, and they have been very open and willing to learn new things and learn new approaches about how to reach um, students that, unfortunately, we hadn't been able to reach in the past. Well, we do have a number of successes, a number of things for which we are proud. As you mentioned, one of our, our greatest sources of pride right now is just the creation of this position. Mm -hmm. But as a district committed to a continuous improvement and trying to get better, what do you see as some of the areas of greatest improvement that, that we need to try to address? So we do have an achievement gap between low income students and students from more um, middle class, mm -hmm. upper middle class backgrounds. And that's something that we really need to be honest with ourselves about and really look to see why does that achievement gap exist? And not just look at you know what students can be doing differently, but also look at what we could be doing differently um, in order to change the tide on that. And we also have an achievement gap between Hispanic and uh, black students and white and Asian students. So those are some areas of growth for us that we really need to think deeply about um, and, 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 and make some changes for. Right. So you'd reference the Diversity Advisory Committee. Tell the community a little bit more about that group. Who makes up that group? What role do they play? And, and what are mm -hmm. some of the things that you've done with that committee so far this year? Great question. So the committee is comprised of um, at least one representative from every school, mm -hmm. a staff person. It could be a teacher or a counselor or some other uh, staff person at the school. And then we have um, at least one parent or community stakeholder representative from each school as well. And so, um, and principals um, as in, in with their their staff they make decisions about who that person should be but right now um, I could say that our school leaders have done a great job in making sure that we have diverse representation on the diversity advisory committee um, they we have Asian black white people who speak multiple languages just a variety of racial and ethnic backgrounds as well as perspectives that people um, bring to the committee so that's how it's comprised right as you'd indicated we are blessed to be in a very high achieving school district but that's when we look at the student body the student performance overall but gaps uh, exist within certain groups of students mm -hmm. would you tell the the community really what an achievement gap is and why it's so important for us to really focus mm -hmm. on trying to close those gaps so when you look at um, high stakes exams um, specifically like uh, what we have here in Illinois the students are tested to assess their reading proficiency levels or math skill proficiency levels um, unfortunately they're um, exist a gap regarding that proficiency between black students and Hispanic students and white and Asian students. So those students are performing at a much higher rate than um, black and Hispanic students are performing. So that's what, when we define gap, it's usually in terms of those high states testing exams that the state um, administers. Great. And why is it so important that we address those? 
Because we want to ensure that our, all students have access to a high quality education because you, we know that ultimately that impacts life outcomes. Right. And we want to be sure that um, you know, all students are prepared to be successful in life, be that in college or in um, careers that they might start immediately after school, um, after high school or not. So that's Great. why it's important. So opportunity for personal reflection. You look back at this uh, last half of a year. Mm -hmm. What's a personal success for you in this position as you look back on your first six months, what are you most proud of uh, from that time? I think I'm really most proud of just getting the conversation started. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, we try to create situations or environments where we think it has to be the perfect conditions before we start having conversations. And now we've gotten to a point where we're not waiting on some certain set of circumstances to start having the conversation. We're going in, we're having those difficult you know, conversations. And as I said before, that fortunately, the, our, our 203 staff has been very receptive to like hear that information as well as to talk about it. So I think that's my biggest point of cel celebration so far. Great. And so you think about the future, both short term and longer term. What are some goals you have in this position over the remainder of the 2018-19 school year? And then what are some things that you see as kind of a phase two or next steps for this position in Fort Naperville 203? So right now, one of the things I'm working on um, is the planning. Oh, there are two things I'm working on and they're both in the planning stages that I hope by the end of this year we will have that figured out and sorted out. Um, first would be um, really thinking deeply about a district-wide implicit bias training. So I'm working with our learning services team and our HR team to think about like how that might be. Um, another is to take a, a look at our current curriculum, doing like a curriculum audit to see um, where are those opportunities for us to be more culturally responsive. Um, so the planning stages for those and then hopefully in a phase two we'll go move from planning to implementation of the training for implicit bias, um, as well as, um, you know, possibly identifying some ways to improve our curriculum so that it's more culturally responsive. Very quickly, at the end of this school year, you look back on your first school year here, what's one thing you look to to measure success for yourself? So one thing to measure myself for success, I think, you know, um, when you walk into a building, I know this might not be a hard point data point, <laughs> but where you know there are parents from a variety of backgrounds who are in the schools, they feel welcome, they feel like expected and ready to be there, and our students all you know feel like that this is a place for everyone. And I, I hope that by the end, at least by the end of this year, that we can get to that point. Those are great goals. Thank, Thank you. you. Up next, three of our teachers who are teaching the new Career 203 Equity courses offered by Naperville 203.